The Count is a mutual film that Chaplin made in 1916 about mistaken identity and using a count in his films, particularly played by the uh, supporting actor Leo White, was something that Chaplin did a lot. Interestingly enough, even though he had done this type of story many times before, Chaplin really hadn't worked out the narrative at the time that he started shooting this film. In most of the outtakes, what you have is Chaplin shooting the films sequentially from the very beginning to the end, if he knew the narrative and knew what he wanted to do. But in two cases, with The Immigrant and The Count, he actually shoots in reverse order. The kitchen set was actually the first set that Chaplin used. This was the first material shot for The Count. The tramp and the cook have uh, had some complications in their association apparently and so Charlie indicates that he is going to go commit suicide and this is one of those situations where Chaplin does a lot of variation on the comic business constantly changing one particular element that continues to be used is the cheese. Charlie doing business where he's blowing his nose on a sock and sticking his hand in the smelly cheese. You can see the sock in his shirt sleeve. Playing off the intimacy. He smells her hand, it smells bad, we don't know why. He sticks the sock in front of his nose. You can see it's a sock. The previous shots wasn't as clear. So now we get the reason why her hands smell bad. Each shot is slightly different as he experiments with different material. So he's holding his hand in the cheese longer this time before he realizes what the problem is, more of a reaction to the smell. So the business is becoming more polished as it evolves. He tries to cover up the smell of his hand by wiping it off the bottom of the shoe, overreacting a bit to the smelly cheese, and covers it with his hat this time in order to try and deal with the smell. Relatively long take, indicating that Chaplin is trying to feel his way through. footage of Charlie having to hide in the basket because the butler played by James T. Kelly's coming in and that horrible smelly cheese is suddenly dumped in the same basket where he is forced to hide. And we see James Kelly coming in. He wants a drink and poor Charlie is suffering from the cheese. He throws it out. Kelly doesn't like the cheese either. Cook throws it back in the basket. Kelly is really offended by the cheese. This other maid comes to get Kelly out of the kitchen so Charlie can get out of the basket and recover from his close encounter. This was business that he wanted to incorporate into the film. It was the first material that he shot. It reflected Chaplin's background in English Music Hall it was something that lower class, working class audiences in English Music Hall really enjoyed and something that middle class audiences did not care for. So Chaplin was incorporating a lot of material, bringing it into his films from his Music Hall experience. Also the number of takes, repeating it over and over again, I think this is a reflection of Chaplin's background with the English Music Hall producer Fred Carnell. When they were doing comic sketches, they would rehearse as a group, and Chaplin would use carnal actors in his films. They would be working out a routine, and the routine would be much more like choreography rather than someone sitting down and writing a story as such. And we see this being reflected in his films. He's got an idea, he is expanding upon it, he's developing that particular comic business, he's working on it over and over again, and eventually, after he's got that particular routine polished, then 
he's satisfied with it and he goes on to do something else. As he developed the story, it starts in the kitchen and then he ends up in the dumb waiter and he's taken to the upstairs of this fine house and becomes involved with the owners and their costume party and their, and their fancy dinner. Eric Campbell comes in playing the Count and both he and Charlie the Tramp are imposters at this fancy dress party. Then the real Count comes and Charlie is found out for not being the special guest that they expected him to be. This is one of the interesting shots with Leo White introduced as the Count early. From the images and the uh, way they're behaving, we get the impression that Leo is an imposter. And then he's later replaced by Eric Campbell as the Count, in much the same way that Eric uh, became the waiter in The Immigrant. Charlie and Edna have gone outside and they're eating. And this is a variation of business that Chaplin had done at Keystone. And one of the things you'll notice is that they're eating ice cream. And this was not used in the count. And he pours the ice cream down his front. Chaplin trying out different bits of business. He's uh, uncomfortable with the ice cream. And he doesn't use this gag, even though it's funny, but then it becomes one of the classic moments in the adventure. So he's constantly recycling business that he's thought about before. Now we have the famous eating scene interesting situation here where Charlie has blocked it so we have four people John Rand, Charlie, Edna Proviance and Eric Campbell making so much noise slurping his soup that Charlie can't hear Edna he asks Eric to stop and then the flipping of the soup in John Rand's eye in the next take on this reel 98A he suddenly has cut it to a three shot and he has shifted Eric to the left. John Rand is no longer in the shot and he's doing another variation of the same business with the noisy soup eating. Changed Eric's reactions and Eric is the one that gets hit with the spoonful of soup instead of John Rand different techniques of eating spaghetti. Various bits of business that Chaplin would play with that were funny in and of themselves and very often would get cut simply because it wouldn't work in the overall scene. One thing that would happen with these outtakes is that very often they would crack each other up and spoil the take. Sometimes you have to just stop the uh, film and uh, look at individual frames, particularly when they have the slate. You can get some very interesting information. So we have Lloyd Bacon, who is playing the orchestra leader, in his shirt sleeves. And he went on to have an interesting career as a director at Warner Brothers. He made the classic 42nd Street with Busby Berkeley. We have Chaplin. And then we have him talking with Eric Campbell and Albert Austin. And then between them, we can just slightly see Edna Proviance. Chaplin had to provide introductory material in order to explain why he was at this party and why he was an imposter. So the last material that was shot for this film was in a tailor shop, and Charlie is the Taylor's assistant to Eric Campbell's tailor. Charlie is fired. Eric finds an invitation to this party in some clothing that he's supposed to modify as a tailor. And it's at this point that Eric decides to go to the party and Charlie and the tailor inadvertently discover 
that they're both imposters. Here we have Slate 251. This uh, film was shot, uh, I don't remember any Slates much over 300. Chaplin is introducing how he comes to the house. He'd already started with the kitchen scene at the very beginning, but he has to go back and he has to do his introductory shot of how the tramp comes to the house in the first place. And after all this effort, he is able to produce what is considered a very classic, very enjoyable film, which is still much appreciated to this day.